The warm beams of morning sunlight streamed down onto her pretty face. And for this female stag beetle, life was pretty sweet as she sat perfectly still, blissfully catching a tan on this giant tanning bed. If she lay still enough, perhaps the humans might not see her, masterfully camouflaged with the furniture. Or so she thought. Hello, Mrs. Stag Beetle, and nice to meet you this morning, ma'am. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. Risking her life to bask in the warming morning sun before heading underground for the day was imperative after another very cold night here in the cloud rainforest of Mount Banahau in Southeast Asia. This is where my ultimate adventure began. Deep within this mountain expanse of untouched rainforest, millions of years in age. The locals believe this ancient mountain rainforest is enchanted, a place of supernatural occurrences. I figured it was all just folklore talk. That was until, as you will see later in this video, I had one of the strangest experiences in my life that I can't quite explain while staying for two nights in this lush rainforest. Speaking of which, see that big tree? Below it was our chalet, a rustic and gorgeous two-story home we booked through Airbnb that was built right smack in the middle of the rainforest at the foot of the ever-majestic Mount Banahau, which towered before us like a living, breathing behemoth, looking down at us through the golden morning haze. I came here with my dogs and a few friends, but what was supposed to just be a nice getaway out in nature turned out to be one of the most profound and incredible experiences with Mother Nature I'd never forget. Guys, I've come to learn that this mountain is truly alive, cradling an army of the most amazing creatures that make up its living parts. In the trees, in the flowers, in the fungus, hunting, dying, with menacing weaponry, stunning colors so out of this world, and the unfolding of everyday ant drama that this channel has never before seen. But one creature in particular truly captivated me like no other animal has in my entire life. Look, I saw it quietly scurrying by, then disappear on my very first day in the rainforest. And when it did, I literally couldn't breathe. No way! My favorite ant species of all time were native to this rainforest. I had only previously seen them in books and photos on ant taxonomy websites and have mentioned them a few times on this channel, fantasizing about how I wish I could own a colony of them. And though I had heard that they were found in my part of the world, I was unprepared to actually see them in real life for the first time. One thing's for sure, I absolutely needed to find them and capture them on film and hopefully even find a queen or young colony to take home for all of us to actually keep on the channel. I was prepared to search every corner of this rainforest, every nook and cranny, high and low, for this rare unicorn of an ant. And I only had 48 hours to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has to be one of my favorite episodes I've ever created on this channel. So sit back, grab some popcorn, and experience with me in 4K UHD a mind-blowing exploration through the mystical rainforest and this epic story of how I found the legendary blue ants of Mount Banahau. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. A giant polyrachis ant pauses in the morning sunshine before entering the grandiose expanse that was this dense rainforest before her. And AC family, when I say it was a dense rainforest, I mean dense rainforest. Check it out, there wasn't a single square inch of space that wasn't populated and bursting with life. And the aggregated sounds of the rainforest resounded when quietly standing in place to look around. Every surface was exploited by mosses, plants, critters, fungi, and other bizarre life forms, which you'll definitely see later in this episode. But it all seemed like the perfect stomping grounds for the mythical blue ants. 
But AC family, before we start on our search for these mythical blue ants, I wanted to mention that I have a big surprise for you all, waiting at the end of this video, which I'm sure will get some of you screaming at your screen. I'll also be needing your help making a pretty big decision, so be sure to stay tuned for all that. I still couldn't get over that sudden blue ant sighting. There's a reason these blue ants, and more so their blue color, are extraordinary. You see, blue is actually kind of a rare color in the biological world. It's particularly difficult for most organisms to produce blue pigment, for reasons that scientists still don't understand. But even structural blue, produced by refracting light, i.e. metallic blue, is fairly rare in nature. But Mother Nature managed to masterfully achieve it in these metallic blue ants of Mount Banahau, making them a total unicorn in this rainforest. A unicorn I absolutely needed to find. Plus, I'm part of the alleged 40% of the world whose favorite color is blue. How about you guys? But there was just one problem. I had no idea where to start looking for their nest. You see, blue ants are members of the genus Polyrachis, a diverse genus with over 600 species, including the huge black one you just saw earlier, and the young colony of Polyrachis golden ants we're already keeping on this channel. But the challenge was Polyrachis nests are just as diverse as the genus, falling under four categories. Arboreal, meaning in the trees, in carton and silk nests among leaves and twigs, lignicolis, meaning nests in the cavities of plants, terrestrial, meaning nests on the ground under a rock or log, or subterranean, like most ants we know, meaning nests dug out in soil. But as for blue ants, I truly had no idea what kind of nests they made, nor where to start looking for a blue ant nest in this massive rainforest. I mean, there were just so many different niches everywhere. It would be like locating a needle in a haystack, and it would have really helped me out if their nests were a bright metallic blue as well. But I decided to simply start right where I was, and where I had spotted the blue ant. At this lengthy tiled ledge of the chalet's balcony, I noticed that a lot of insects were using it like a highway to get around, including various ants. I figured if I were a blue ant, perhaps living close to such a highway might be advantageous. So, I checked the columns below the ledge. AC family, have a look at what I saw. It was incredible to see that life was so opportunistic here that it was literally growing in the most difficult of spaces. Mosses and tiny epiphytic bird's nest ferns grew from the tight grooves between the tiles. And regardless of how difficult the space, I knew that where there are plants, there are ants. A trail of Dolichotaris ants were buzzing by along the metal bar work. These girls seemed like they were in such a rush. Imagine running along this bar with no safety. Guess you can't be afraid of heights if you're an ant in Mount Banahau. I was curious to see where the ants were traveling to and why they were in such a rush. My guess was food. But before I was able to follow the ant trail to find out where these ants were rushing to, I was suddenly distracted by a low and droning buzz from above. It was coming from the trees. AC family, check it out! A massive bee, about the size of a golf ball, buzzed around the bouquets of ambrosial flowers bursting from the tree's foliage, collecting sweet nectar from the blossoms. I watched it navigate like a masterful drone as it decided which flowers it would try and feed from next. It was actually quite entertaining to watch. It was clear that this was a symbiotic relationship that was millions of years in the making. The tree would provide nectar for the bee to feed from, while the bee would help pollinate the tree's flowers, hence allowing the tree to produce seeds to create more trees. It was a beautiful dance between two organisms that I couldn't help but watch in delight. Speaking of flowers, this rainforest had the craziest flowers I'd ever seen. Check out this stunning heliconia, also known as a lobster claw plant. Due to its shape looking like lobster claws, I had only previously seen them in expensive floral arrangements. But here, 
they were growing abundantly in the wild. But if you think this was gorgeous, check out these flowers. AC family, meet Thunbergia mysorensis, a vining flower that hung with brightly displaying ketchup red and banana yellow colors to advertise its sweet nectar to pollinating insects, like this wasp. Again, it was a valuable trade-off between two organisms, but not an exclusive one. The Thunbergia flowers also attracted ants. A Dolichotaris ant was licking the sweet nectar, then pausing to rest. It was another valuable pollinator for this flower. But it seems in the business dealings of this rainforest, not all contractual terms are the same, because lying still and patiently in the Thunbergia was another creature with a very different arrangement with this flower. A white crab spider lay in ambush, awaiting for insects, hoping to visit the Thunbergia flowers, to come close enough to pounce on and eat. And it seemed the ants were getting dangerously close to the white specter, which I assumed were invisible to the ants. AC family, check out the crazy thing that happened next. I held my breath as an ant came up from behind. It stopped to clean itself. The spider was just so patient, and I figured it was waiting for the most perfect opportunity to pounce. The ant began to move around the spider. And then came so close. AC family, watch this. The ant touched the spider from behind. The ant crawled on top of the spider. The spider still not moving. The ant crawled towards the spider's face. And continued on its way. What? In an unexpected turn of events, the spider chose not to eat the ant. Hmm, perhaps the spider was waiting for a meteor meal, like a butterfly or hoverfly? Perhaps prey that wouldn't be so dangerous? Who knows? But it did seem the crab spider and the ants had a benevolent business agreement of their own to not bother each other and ultimately share the Thunbergia flowers. So I had searched the trees, vines, and flowers of the area, and still no signs of blue ants anywhere. It was time for me to check the ground. I wandered over to these mossy stairs at the side of our chalet, and what I saw there was just incredible, and I know you guys will find it pretty crazy too. I thought they were ants, but nope, there was something else, and on a mission of epic proportions. Termites, and they were on some sort of crazy raid, all coming from the base of this coconut tree. My eyes followed up their trail, and suddenly came upon a striking sight. A huge swarm of termites, busy doing something. I looked closer to see what all the termite fuss was about. It seemed the termites were preoccupied with a thick carpet of fungus that was covering an unbarked part of the tree. The termites were eating this fungus. They seemed to just love the stuff. This termite species must belong to the group of termites that feed and farm fungus as a food source. I watched as hordes of determined termites carried huge chunks of this fungus down the tree back to their main nest to continue growing underground fungus farms, much like leafcutter ants do. This sight was pretty mind-blowing to me because first off, it was a very good reminder that not all termite species are domestic pests that destroy homes. These fungus feeding and growing termites being an example. In fact, I realized that these termites were essential to other trees in this rainforest. Because if ever a tree were to suffer exterior damage to its bark, thereby exposing it to dangerous fungal infections, these fungus collecting termites could help take care of that for the trees, thereby giving the trees a better chance to heal Again, it was yet another clear example of how different organisms, in this case tree, fungus, and termites, were interconnected and dependent on each other for survival. A biological pact that was surely ancient in provenance within this rainforest. But at this time, the day was coming to an end, and I decided I would wake up early for day two to continue my search for the elusive blue ants. But AC family, 
I couldn't have possibly imagined the complete madness that the Mount Banaha rainforest had in store for me the next day. Waking up at the chalet early in the morning was pretty eye-opening. I realized just how much I actually didn't even need to try going out looking for wildlife. Because life was just so condensed in this rainforest, the wildlife was literally just spilling out and coming at us from everywhere. The mesh door to our chalet acted like a net, trapping so many unlucky critters. An alien-looking cicada. A blue and white harvestman a bright colored wasp and a yellow beetle. A fuzzy peach colored moth scuttled about trying to get back into the rainforest after successfully entering the chalet in pursuit of the lights that were on the night before. And will you believe a huge and beautiful swallowtail butterfly landed randomly to drink from our table centerpiece at breakfast? This rainforest was truly something else. But it seemed the morning had also brought with it an abundance of new gift offerings, particularly for the ants. Dead corpses of insects that had died the night before were greeted by the morning sun. Opening the mesh door, I was shocked to see the floor littered with dead and dying termite elates. The Dolichotaris ants were taking full advantage of the feast. So this was what they were eating. When termite elates, meaning young kings and queens, have mating flights, for some reason many of these termite kings and queens fail to survive the night. And clearly these Dolichotaris ants are grateful for such a failure rate. But as for the ants, it seems success rate, as far as feeding goes, all depends on how many fellow ants you can rally up to actually help you collect the food. A lone yet determined ant struggles to drag this huge dead male marauder ant back home towards the nest. I also noticed that two other ants of a different species had died, perhaps trying to seize and kill this male ant while it was still alive. But now that it was dead, with two other dead ants latched onto it, this ant knew it had hit the jackpot. A three for one. All right. Oh dear. It had a long way to go. It seemed mornings were the best feeding times for ants as they picked from the plethora of dead insects that had died in the night, like this Odontopanera ant, working on taking this dead bee home. But I very quickly discovered that this ant breakfast buffet was a cutthroat industry. Now, AC family, I don't think I was prepared for the drama I witnessed next. Male ants like this die after mating. It's just how things work in the ant world. And sadly, this male was unlucky enough to be discovered at his deathbed by a couple of yellow crazy ants. As the male ant struggled to die in peace, the pair of cackling yellow crazy ants circled eagerly around him, attempting to speed up his death process by spraying him with formic acid so they could take him home for food. The male ant made a valiant attempt to get up and run away, but it was no use. Nature had sentenced him to death and the formic acid sprays of the yellow crazy ants would soon finish him off. But again, this total breakfast buffet is a cutthroat business for ants, where as you're about to see now, things could go awry in a split second. Watch this. Surrounding equally hungry Odontopanera ants could smell both the formic acid sprays of the yellow crazy ants and the dying male ant. One pops in from the right. The male ant makes a second attempt to break away. Another Odontopanera ant moves in, but is shooed away by one of the yellow crazy ants. These yellow crazy ants were determined to defend this food prize. Another Odontopanera ant advances in, only to be met with yellow crazy ant acid spray. But just when I thought these yellow crazy ants had won this match, things took a very interesting turn. Watch this. And just a reminder, none of this footage is time-lapsed. These ants are moving at real speeds. The yellow crazy ants were at this point confident that this male ant had been conquered and claimed their property, and that soon they'd be feasting upon it within their nest. But as my mom used to always say, never celebrate too early. Watch this, guys. Out of nowhere, an Odontopanera ant popped in 
and yoink the male ant, while the yellow crazy ants weren't on guard. Hey, give that back, the yellow crazy ant exclaimed as their prize was dragged away. Soon the odontopanera ant had successfully dragged the male ant so dangerously close to their nest, the yellow crazy ants thought twice about trying to further retrieve it. And it abandoned the chase entirely. The male ant was dragged into the odontopanera ant nest, where it would feed the colony. It was for the better, as these odontopanera ants are endemic, and yellow crazy ants are invasive in these rainforests. What a scene! I continued to search for the blue ants, and it was still a bit unfortunate to know that they weren't so common where I was at the chalet. Or maybe there was a specific time of day they emerged. It was morning when I first spotted them the day before, so if they were going to emerge, it would be now, around this time. As I looked around, I continued to pay witness to just how intricate the circulation of nutrients was in this rainforest. On the ledge, I spotted a mass of ants feeding on bird poop. It was amazing to think that one organism's waste was like a McDonald's feast for others. The ants delightedly dissected the bird droppings of its various edible constituents and took them back to their nest. In the chaos of plants and textures, I tried to train my eyes to look for anything blue and moving. And sure enough, suddenly, a pop of blue did appear, scuttling through the foliage. Whoa, what was that? It made its way onto the ledge. Ladies and gentlemen, like a comical wind-up children's toy, a big black and neon blue weevil strutted down the runway with a bravado of a 90s supermodel. It stopped and turned to my camera to strike its hottest blue steel pose. Vogue, take a look at this beauty. Perfect legs, amazing exoskeletal structure, and the most haute couture, iridescent cyan and turquoise dotted elytra, looking exquisite against the PVC black. It seemed the ultimate fashion designer, Mother Nature, nailed the bright blue shades on this beetle as well. It turned for a profile shot, then continued its strut down the catwalk. I watched in amazement as this beautiful creature continued down the ledge, turned to crawl down the side, and oop, fell. I looked to the ground to see if it survived. Yep, it was fine. That is some tough exoskeleton. It continued its strut up the beam to model its colors. And as it did, I was surprised to notice how its seemingly loud colors might actually make a good camouflage against the right backdrop. The supermodel beetle then disappeared out of view, backstage. <laughs> now one of the things I did discover was that not all the creatures of this rainforest looked as friendly, for what appeared on the scene next was truly menacing in demeanor. An earwig, but this was no ordinary dinky little earwig that I grew up with knowing in Canada. This was some huge tropical jungle species of earwig. I didn't dare touch it as those pinchers looked crazy scary. I've been pierced before by Canadian earwigs as a kid, to the point that it drew blood, so I definitely didn't want to try my luck with this black beauty as it scoured the ledge for edibles. But something on its back drew my attention. AC family, what do you guys think that fuzzy white stuff is? Could it be fungus? Was it harmful? Could this be the beginning of some zombifying parasitic fungus like cordyceps? Maybe just some debris that got stuck to the earwig as it passed by? I could only speculate. Whatever it was, it was clear that there were truly innumerable secrets that were integral parts of this rainforest left to be discovered. Including the whereabouts of the blue ants I had been searching for for two days now. Where could they be? When night came and there was still no sign of blue ants, on my last night in the rainforest, I pretty much accepted the fact that I'd probably never get to see the blue ants again that I had just been lucky the morning I'd spotted it. Perhaps it was truly a rare and elusive species in this rainforest, and that a blue ant sighting was truly like spotting a unicorn. My friends and I enjoyed our final night at Mount Banahau, with a few beers at the chalet. And after everyone went to bed, and I was the only one awake, the most inexplicable thing happened to me.
a voice spoke out to me in the night. I was instantly sober. What? Who's talking? I called out into the night. Human. We are the trees. It answered back. I was terrified and stood in place wide-eyed. I paused to think. What on earth to say to the trees of Mount Banahau? I... I love you. And I love all the amazing creatures and plants that are part of you. There was no response, but I could somehow feel the trees were listening. Nocturnal bees were now taking their turn, fluffing up the royal blossoms like servants would the imperial gown of an empress. <clears throat> but I do wonder, I continued, this was my chance. I'm looking for what I find to be the most gorgeous of your creatures. I would like to find your blue ants. I listened to the night for the trees to respond. Suddenly, a clap of thunder resounded in the night sky. A storm was approaching, so I knew I couldn't stay out here all night, chatting with trees. The trees were no longer responding to me, and I found myself just standing there in the freezing cold night, looking up at the forest. Okay, seriously, I realized I was just being totally crazy now and clearly had too much to drink tonight. So I decided to head to bed and figured perhaps I could book this Airbnb again sometime in the future to hopefully get lucky enough to find blue ants again. I went to bed as the night storm floated over Mount Banahau. And AC family, you won't believe this, but the next morning, Check out what I saw scuttling down the ledge. A blue ant. I actually spotted several of them scuttling around. And wow, the sight of them took my breath away. Have a look, guys. I was truly spellbound by their beauty. Have you ever seen an ant so blue? Aren't they just magnificent? I don't think I can recall another ant species more beautiful than these. In my books, these ants were the most beautiful ants in the world. One actually stopped to bask in the morning sun, allowing me to get a great shot of it. What a spectacular creature! Its exoskeleton was smooth, with a few spines. The curves and angles on this ant were stunning, with a body color and shine so perfect. It was like admiring a supremely designed sports car with an awesome paint job. AC family, I was in disbelief, but was hands down utterly grateful we had found the legendary blue ants here in Mount Banahau. It's possible the overnight rains raised morning humidity levels, which caused the blue ants to emerge. I mean, either that or the mystical trees I had spoken with actually granted my wish. Just in case, I thanked the trees out loud that morning for their kindness and help. I would never forget this moment, ever. Now, AC family, as I allowed one to crawl onto my hand and even proceeded to take some stories for Instagram, I suddenly found myself rethinking my initial intentions for these blue ants. At the start of this video, I mentioned that I would be needing your help and opinions on something. And it's this. After all that we've seen in just the two days within this rainforest, after being witnesses to how closely dependent and interactive the species of this rainforest are with each other, do you think collecting a colony of these ants to keep in captivity was still a good idea? I was beginning to think twice. If I could locate a nest of these rare blue ants and somehow get them into a container and take them back to my condo, I began to question whether or not I'd be able to amply provide them a quality of life that was anything remotely close to the one they get here in the wild. I thought about how many specific species, habitats, environmental conditions, and circumstances unique to this forest that it might depend on for survival. And it made me wonder if I was capable of simulating that in a captive setting. Perhaps finding a blue ant queen might be a more ethical and a better opportunity at trying to keep them. But AC family, I ask you guys now, do you think we should still try keeping these blue ants from Mount Banahau in our antiverse? I could always ask the locals to contact me if they ever find a queen or even a nest of them.
At one point, I tried to contain a blue ant to better film it, but seeing it in a critter crawler almost didn't feel right anymore. Seeing them in real life in their element at this very moment was already very gratifying. Do any of you guys feel the same way? I had to think about it some more, but I'd love to hear your opinions on the matter. So let me know in the comments. Overall, these past 48 hours in the rainforest were truly awe-inspiring and mind-opening. I'll never forget the crazy things we saw. And of course, we'll never forget our rather supernatural interaction with the trees that night. I am convinced that ancient rainforests like this throughout the world are each living dynamic entities of their own, with the sum of their multitudinous organisms giving each forest its own unique characteristics. It's sad to think that ancient rainforests like this one here at Mount Banahau are disappearing at a rate of 6,000 acres or 4,000 football fields every hour to make way for human activities. And with these disappearing rainforests also disappear their armies of amazing creatures that make up their living parts. In the trees, in the flowers, in the fungus, hunting, dying, with menacing weaponry, stunning colors so out of this world, as well as their unicorns, unseen and undiscovered. Thankfully, these rainforests here in Mount Banahau are protected and our Airbnb was actually located in a nature reserve, which made me happy because it meant I could continually come here and spot the legendary blue ants for years to come. I left Mount Banahau with a newfound respect and reverence for these natural beings of life we call rainforests. I also left with a small container of these. So after thinking about it for a while, I figured why not rise to the challenge and try keeping the very neat creatures that now lay within this container. These were creatures that indeed appeared somewhere in this episode. And AC family, I truly couldn't wait to welcome another new colony to the channel. AC family, did you enjoy today's extra long episode? Man, was it hard to film and create, but so gratifying and fulfilling and an honor to share with you all. Let me know if you think we should go ahead and try to keep some blue ants. And I'd love to hear your guesses as to what new colony we are welcoming to the channel. You won't want to miss the grand reveal of our newest members of the Antiverse in next week's episode. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and bell icon now and hit all so you get notified at every upload. Also, don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. It would really mean a lot to me, guys. Thank you. AC and her colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here. If you would like to watch extended play footage of the blue ants in this week's episode, go check them out. And guys, did you know that it's anting season in the Northern Hemisphere? And you don't even need to leave your home to start an ant colony. You can catch pregnant queen ants from the safety of your own backyard, balcony, or open window starting this month. Be sure to visit AntsCanada.com for all your ant keeping and collecting gear shipped to you in a special package from our ant loving facility in the USA. So you can get the most out of your ant keeping experience. We ship worldwide and also offer full email support if you need our help. We also have a helpful forum and ant colony trading marketplace on the site. Visit AntsCanada.com today. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week, we asked, what substance do plant insects bribe ants with in exchange for protection? Congratulations to Jojo Chase Fleming, who answered, Honeydew. Congratulations, Jojo. You just won a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, which was your favorite creature shown in this video? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ultimate ant keeping handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's Ant Love forever.